Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about angles between uh, planes. Well, um, obviously I would like you to watch this lecture from unizor.com because, um, because the lecture has notes on this website and it's very useful to read the notes. Sometimes they are even more detailed than the lecture itself. Um, plus, it's just a different um, kind of view. One thing is you're, you're watching the lecture, another is you're reading the textbook, which notes basically, you know, they, they are really a textbook. All right, so um, we will talk about, we continue talking about angles, and in this particular lecture, I would like to talk about angles formed by uh, two parallel planes and another plane which intersects it. So first we will talk about um, terminology. Well, actually it's a lot of terminology there, so let's just be patient about it. Um, let's assume that two parallel planes are horizontal, like this. And I can try to draw them in some way. This is one plane and this is another plane. This is sigma and this is tau. Now we will have the plane which intersects them and uh, the view will be like this. So it intersects here and here. Now these are lines of intersection of this plane. Let's call it gamma. Now, the lines are obviously divide completely. So, we have many dihedral angles here. For instance, angle between this half a plane and this half a plane, or this half a plane and this one, or, or this one and this, or this one and this. I mean, there are many different angles. And I'm going to define all of them very similarly to the plane geometry situation when you have two parallel lines and the line which intersects them. So, terminology is very similar. Actually, it's identical. So, the parallel planes are parallel planes and they correspond to parallel lines in the plane geometry. The plane which intersects both of these is called transversal and that's exactly the same as uh, in the plane geometry when this line is transversal. Now, the angles. Remember, these angles are vertical. So, in this particular case, it's exactly the same thing. Let's make a, let's make a slightly different uh, view basically. If you view really horizontally then these two parallel planes would be viewed as lines, right? And this plane, if you view again from this perspective, from, from this direction, would look like this one. So we will just see the edges of these planes. So it's very easy for me right now to define the angles between them. Now this line of intersection, well basically it's um, if, if you look from this, you, you just see the point where it, where it intersected. Uh, and here, the same thing. So, let me put um, some letters which describe half planes. This is invisible, right? Okay, now, um, this line which divides uh, plane sigma, this line is an intersection of gamma and sigma. 
Now we will call this sigma L for left and this is sigma right for right. Why? Because in this perspective, from this view, it would be on the left and on the right. This will be sigma left and this would be sigma right. Same thing with the tau. This would be tau left and this would be tau right. Tau left and tau and tau right. Now gamma will have basically two lines, this one and this line, which divides in different parts. Now if I will assume this line as a division, then I will have this gamma as a gamma up and this one would be gamma down. But in this particular line, if this particular line divides the plane gamma, I will call this piece of gamma gamma up and the bottom line would be gamma down. All right. So based on the context, based on which edge, which line of intersection uh, I will consider, I will use the same gamma up and gamma down, but mean different things. If this is the division, this will be up and this will be down. If this is the division, then this will be up and this is down. So let me just um, symbolize one of the angles. For instance, the vertical angle, this one, which is from this plane, half plane, to this half plane. Now, that would be um, sigma left. Uh, let's call this line S and this line T. S and gamma up, right? So this is this angle. Now, it's vertical with this one, right? So it's vertical, this angle, and um, sigma right, uh, S, and gamma down, this angle. So these angles are vertical. Left sigma uh, S, gamma up, and right, S gamma down. So these two are vertical. As well as these are vertical and these are vertical and these are vertical. They're all vertical. And all the names I put in the notes, I don't want right now to spend time, but you understand what it is. Right? So this is basically the definition of the vertical angles and they uh, and this definition follows exactly the same logic as uh, in the plane geometry. Now what else do we have? We have uh, corresponding angles. Now, corresponding angles in the plane geometry, remember, it's this one and this one. They're on one side and both, let's say, the upper part. So, in this particular terminology, it would be this angle and this angle. So, it's... Uh, let's say sigma left s uh, gamma up angle and on the tau side angle tau left ta uh, t and gamma up so that would be my corresponding angles then what else uh, alternate interior, this angle and this angle. They are alternate on both sides of the transversal and they are both internal. Again, I can put some letters into it. Now, in this particular case, uh, this angle would be gamma left S, uh, sorry, si um, sigma left S gamma down, left S down and uh, alternate would be this one would be tau right T and gamma up something like this these two angles are corresponding 
uh, sorry, uh, alternate alternate interior. Now, uh, the alternate exterior are these opposite angles. In this case, it's this one and this one. And what else? Consecutive interior. These are two angles on the same side of the gamma. They are um, supplemental. Together, they are making 180 degree. Right. So these are consecutive interior um, angles. Now, these are all terminology. It's just definitions. So what happens if you have two parallel line, uh, uh, planes and one transversal in, uh, that intersects them all? Now, the obvious continuation of this discussion is, well, in the plane geometry, we have all these wonderful uh, theorems and properties uh, like vertical angles are equal to each other, alternate interior are equal, corresponding are equal, uh, and uh, consecutive internal are supplemental to each other. It's exactly the same in the solid geometry. When you are replacing lines with planes, and uh, the line which intersects the lines would be replaced with plane which intersects the planes. All the dihedral angles which we were talking about right now uh, have exactly the same properties so two vertical dihedral um, uh, angles are equal to each other uh, uh, two uh, let's say alternate interior um, dihedral angles are uh, congruent to each other etc etc how can we prove it well let's just recall that any dihedral angle can be represented as its corresponding linear angle. So let me go back to my previous lecture where I introduced the linear angle concept for dihedral angles. Well, actually, I don't need this. So if you have a particular dihedral angle something like this then a plane which perpendicular to the edge the plane which goes something like this it intersects here this is invisible and this is visible this is invisible too so it intersects this line and this So the corresponding linear angle, which is angle between these two lines of intersection of the perpendicular to the edge, this angle uh, represents the dihedral angle basically one to one. Uh, equal dihedral angles correspond to equal linear angles, and uh, no matter where you position this plane, the linear angle will be exactly the same, etc. So now let's go back to our um, situation with two parallel planes and transversal. What I would like to do, and it's very difficult to, to draw, uh, but I will try, uh, is I would like to replace all these uh, dihedral angles which um, occur in this situation with two parallel and one um, uh, transversal plane, I would like to replace it with uh, linear angles, corresponding linear angles. And here is how I would like to do it. Now my have, I, I have a really challenging task of drawing. So again, two parallel planes. And let's say you intersect them something like this.
actually it would be better if I will slant it a little bit because it's not necessarily perpendicular and I draw it as a perpendicular so that's not good slant it would be something like this Okay, and this plane would be, let me continue this, okay, so this is my sigma, this is my tau, and this is my gamma, this is line S, this is line T. By the way, lines S and T are parallel to each other. Well, there was a theorem actually. If you have two parallel planes and one plane which intersects them both, then the lines of intersection are parallel. We have already proven that. So S and T are parallel. Now, what does it mean? Well, let's consider what kind of edges do we have here. Well, we do have this is an edge, right? And this is an edge. So basically, uh, one second. Okay. So basically, um, when we are talking about dihedral angles, so this dihedral angle or this dihedral angle, these are edges. Now, to go to the linear angles, I have to um, have a plane which is perpendicular to the edge. Remember, this is the edge, and I have to have a per plane perpendicular to the edge. So basically, there is a plane which I can imagine that I draw a plane which is perpendicular to this one. So it cuts basically this, and cuts this plane, and it cuts this, and it cuts this plane. This is my, this is my plane which is perpendicular. And these are linear angles. In this case, I just draw the the corresponding angles, but at the same time, I can use these as vertical angles, etc., etc. So. I am replacing basically by, um, by by constructing the plane which is perpendicular to this edge, which happens to be perpendicular to this one as well, right? Because these are parallel lines. So I'm replacing every dihedral angle with the corresponding linear angle. And since all these theorems about linear angles are exactly as we know from the plane geometry, because now we can consider everything within this plane which is perpendicular to the edges. Now within this plane, every, di every um, dihedral uh, angle is represented by the corresponding linear. So we are dealing with, with plane geometry here. So linear angles are basically reducing our three-dimensional uh, problem into two-dimensional, which we have already learned and we know that all these properties of the vertical and corresponding angles and alternate interior, etc., we know them. So, by doing this, by doing this, I'm actually proving the fact that whatever we know about um, all these uh, uh, angles from the plane geometry, uh, corresponding, vertical, uh, alternate interior, etc., everything, all of these properties are transformed into the corresponding properties of the dihedral angles. So that's basically the properties which I wanted to mention in this lecture. Uh, and um, basically that's it. Right, that, that's all I wanted to do. So I'm just trying to introduce this concept of all these 
um, angles which correspond to the corresponding plane angles and have exactly the same properties. Well, that's it for today. Um, I would recommend you to read the notes for this lecture, which contain basically the same material, but they are using some symbolics. And if I'm talking, let's say, about vertical angles, uh, notes list all the vertical notes on this picture, etc. Um, well, basically, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>